we'll deal with it the best we can if this is the way it's going to turn out. It could be a tragic development in the baby Elena case. The coroner confirms the discovery of what appear to be human remains. Today's development sparked a fight among a few dozen gathered in the east side neighborhood where Elena was last seen. We're going to go away, but there's a family here that has to learn how to go on with their life. And three months of looking for answers and holding out hope have possibly come to an end. We begin 13 minutes of nonstop news with breaking news in the search for a missing Toledo toddler. It all went down this afternoon when police served a search warrant at a home on Federal Street in East Toledo. Police found a box in a garage and in that box, potentially the answer to the question that has haunted many for the past three months. Where's baby Elena? Good evening everyone, I'm Diane Larson. And I'm Lee Conklin, live on Federal Street, where it is the end of what has been a gut day for the people of this community. Uh, the search warrant served uh, by authorities around 336, 340 this afternoon at 704 Federal Street. And inside that home, the home of Stephen King, the ex-boyfriend of baby Elena's mother, authorities found a box. The Lucas County Coroner's Office telling us tonight it does appear to have human remains inside. The coroner working to confirm those findings tomorrow. And we have live team coverage of the late breaking developments on the story. Our team Montgomery talking with family members of baby Elena. She has their incredibly emotional stories. But we begin with the latest on the investigation. 13 ABC's Daryl Kirkland Morgan following all the developments this afternoon into tonight. Daryl standing by live at the safety building. Well, it has been a trying day for everyone involved, especially the friends and family of baby Elena. Angela Steinfurth's ex-boyfriend, Stephen King, was actually brought here to the safety building, building earlier tonight. He's now back at the jail and they're still, and they're still wondering what exactly happened with little Elena. It's been a horrible, emotional day for us. It was the end of a nightmare no one wanted to see. After months and multiple searches, police took another look around 704 Federal Street on Thursday. What they found, a box in the garage of what appears to be human remains. I had walked down the street with the father, um, and I watched, you know, to what I believed was a, it was carried out of the garage down there. It's the home of Angela Steinfurth's ex-boyfriend, Stephen King. Lucas County coroners confirmed they have the box police found, but say there won't be any more answers until Friday. It's never going to go away, but there's a family here that has to learn how to go on with their life, and I think if we could have made it any sooner, it would have been much, much better. Both Angela Steinfurth and Stephen King face a charge of obstruction of justice. King faced a judge Thursday morning for a pretrial with the trial date set for the 20th. But just hours after that court appearance, sources at the jail say he was taken to the TPD safety building for another round of questioning. You can't express how it feels or what it's like or anything. Steinfurth was scheduled to be in court Wednesday morning, but her pretrial was moved to September 25th. Family and friends say they're ready for this to be over and to finally know what happened to little Elena. I don't care what anybody says, there's still that 1% of hope until they tell us there's not. Now what? Now what? and police they have not released any other details I actually went in and they are not even letting reporters or anyone else go up to the detectives unit right now they are expected to talk more about this case tomorrow morning at 10 30 and of course 13 ABC will be with them every step of the way reporting live Daryl Kirkland Morgan 13 ABC action news Lee back to you hey, Daryl Daryl thanks very much and this story has really captivated our area you our viewers have watched it unfold over the last three months since June 2nd when baby Elena went missing. Our Amy Emery has been uh, on this story from the start as well. And Amy, you've got to know the family members of Elena Steinfurth and um, you talked with them earlier today. Well, Lee, I don't know if emotional is the right word to use to describe exactly how they're feeling tonight. I would say more like shocked. They're really in disbelief. They're trying to make sense of, of all of that information that they received today. Many of them actually spending more than 90 days out here on this corner, really praying and hoping for that positive outcome. And though we don't know whether those remains that were found today are in fact Elena, many of the family I spoke with tonight, the thought that it might be is hard to swallow. It's like a nightmare coming true. The heartbreaking words of a father learning the remains of his one-year-old daughter may have been found in an East Toledo garage. Can't even explain it. It's just rough. 
TJ Steinfurth has spent the last three months at the corner of Federal and Leonard spreading the word that baby Elena was missing. They all prayed for the best while preparing for the worst. I still kept hope, but at this point, you know, it's hard to be optimistic right now. I'm sad that it has to turn out this way, but there's nothing I can do to change it. Many questions still remain unanswered in this case. For those who love Elena, that's the most difficult part. It's still running through my mind, how can somebody do that to an 18-month-old baby? I mean, what happened is, my main question is what and how did it happen? They don't know if it's my granddaughter or not. Now, all they can do is wait. Wait for answers, wait for comfort, and wait for justice. I just hope whoever is guilty of it gets their fair punishment for what they did. And that's all we can hope for. And though the pain and disbelief is almost unbearable, there's some relief knowing the mystery may soon be solved. I'm glad that it is coming to a close if this is her, because she needs to be laid to rest the right way. Now, family members plan to hold a vigil here at the corner of Federal and Leonard tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, and they're encouraging everyone to come out and support them as they go through this journey. And Lee, definitely an emotional day today, expecting a lot more emotions tomorrow as we're expected to really hear more from authorities. And it could be a case of worst fears realized. You understand the emotions going into this. And we talk about uh, incredible emotions. We saw those all those motions earlier this afternoon. If you're watching our five o'clock newscast, uh, tempers, uh, the emotions boiling over in this East Toledo neighborhood. This is what it looked like, what it sounded like as things unfolded live on 13 ABC. Emotions have run pretty high out here and it looks like the, a physical altercation has started by some of the people that are out here on Federal Street. It's unclear who exactly is involved in this, but as emotions have certainly run high of different pieces of the neighborhood, different people supporting different families in this neighborhood, the emotions have apparently boiled over out here. Pretty disturbing uh, pictures playing out, but luckily in this case, police are arri eventually arriving on the scene and no one seriously hurt. As I mentioned, the story has really captivated the region. We did catch up with Toledo's mayor, who was uh, at a candidate's forum earlier tonight. Uh, we asked him about the late breaking developments today about baby Elena. Well, at that time, I do not have any comments. Uh, from my standpoint, it's still an ongoing investigation with the police department. And uh, I know that they're preparing information to be able to uh, get you as the media more information. Uh, I'm, I'm happy though that uh, we have a break in the case and that we're moving I think in the appropriate direction to, to bring this to closure. So the mayor mentioned it, a break in the case, but also so many questions surrounding the time. It's been three months, three months, Elena, Elena went missing. And today, police find a box in that garage at 704 Federal Street, very close to where I'm standing right now. We asked the mayor why he thinks it took so long to make that discovery. I'm quite sure that when we are able to um, finalize the issues related to the case, we'll be able to explain why everything is the way it is. But the biggest issue for me today is that uh, there's a break in the case. Is, is that break? So the mayor, a bit tight-lipped, but we appreciate the comments that he did give us earlier tonight. He's certainly not the only one chiming in. Many of you uh, giving us your comments as well. And Diane, standing by back at the studio, with a look at those, Diane. That's right, a lot of you uh, watching right now, very strong feelings about these developments and you're venting along with offering words of support on Facebook and Twitter. Nikki Byers writes to Elena's father and family that cares so deeply and loves her so much. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Carrie Ann Emerson shares her support for Elena's family. She says, this is a very sad day, but hopefully TJ can put his little girl to rest and try to heal his family. But some viewers say they are holding out hope. The coroner tells us, as we've told you all half hour long now, or 15 minutes now, uh, the coroner tells us suspected human remains found. So Samantha Bell says this is the saddest thing that poor baby, although it hasn't been confirmed, it's doubtful the human remains belong to anyone else. Of course, that's just one viewer's opinions. Opinions. Final
final confirmation from the coroner, which we are expecting tomorrow. Lee Conklin back on assignment in East Toledo this evening has a look back on the developments in the case over these past three months. Lee? Yeah, that's right, Diane. Police are expected to release details, and we expect to get answers tomorrow at that news conference at 1030 that we will carry live on 13 ABC. But once again, we want to take a look back at uh, an incredible three months for the family of uh, baby Elena Steinford leading up to the discovery of that box this afternoon and into tonight. On Sunday afternoon, June 2nd, Elena's father showed up at his estranged wife's home for what he thought was a routine custody exchange to pick up his two daughters. The older girl was there, but 18-month-old Elena was missing. I would have never thought of anything like this. I mean, yeah, it don't even seem real now. Mother Angela Steinfurth said the baby was sleeping, but when she went back in to get her, the child was missing. At the first of many vigils to come, Angela pleaded for her baby's return. I don't know if she's alive. There's nothing. And I just want to know that she's okay. Both parents were part of the massive search for the child. Angela even led investigators to a place along the banks of the Maumee where she found a diaper. This here, oh my God, it just made my whole day even worse. I'm by the river. I mean, there's so many things they could do with them. Then a stunning turn of events. On June 12th, police arrested Elena's mother on child endangerment charges. A sobbing Angela Steinfurth appeared in court the next day. Police say she admitted to knowing Elena, knowing Elena suffered a serious physical injury, but didn't get medical treatment for the child. Despite the arrest, still no sign of baby Elena. Crews continued to focus on the Maumee River. June 18th, FBI dive team searched the river but found nothing. Through it all, regular vigils continued as family and loved ones kept Elena's case alive. On June 24th, Angela Steinfurth was indicted by the county grand jury, not on child endangering charges, but of obstructing justice. The last weekend in June, a fence snagged what turned out to be human hair in the Maumee. While this renewed hope and fear, it ultimately proved useless to investigators. One month later, Authorities were still no closer to finding the 18-month-old, yet the vigils continued, and so did hope. Right now, our hope is still, Elena's still alive, Elena's still out there until we hear different. Then another break, another arrest. On July 22nd, police arrested Stephen King, the boyfriend of Angela Steinfurth, at the time Elena went missing. He was also charged with obstruction of justice. The case took another turn on August 8th, when prosecutors announced in a court hearing for King, that Elena's disappearance would now be investigated as a homicide. But it would be more than a month after that before any new developments. And it apparently broke wide open today with the discovery of a little box covered with a tarp containing what the coroner says appears to be human remains. And stay with 13 ABC for continuing coverage. The latest developments on the case of baby Elena. We're going to car carry that news conference live tomorrow at 1030 on air. You can also watch it on 13abc.com when we stream that for you. And continuing coverage continues during this newscast of this story. Stay with us. The latest updates online, 13abc.com, Facebook, and Twitter as well. For now, reporting live in East Toledo, Lee Conklin, 13 ABC Action News. Diane. Lee, thanks. Happening right now in other news, 81 homes and businesses are without gas service in downtown Toledo. A Columbia Gas spokesperson tells 13 ABC a six-inch gas line was hit near Fifth Third Field about 6.30 tonight. Crews are working to repair the line. They hope to have everything restored by tomorrow morning. Some Ottawa County residents are being told don't drink the water because of toxic algae. Carroll Township Police confirmed that the algae toxin has gotten into the water source. They're telling residents don't drink it, don't give it to animals or pets, don't boil it, don't allow anything living to consume it. Bottled water will be available at Carroll, available at Carroll Township Complex on West to St. East Road starting at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. You laid the rest the right way. 13 minutes of nonstop news, much more ahead. More reaction from Federal Street and the breaking developments in the Baby Elena case. An independent audit finds fewer problems for Glass City record keeping. Plus, more Toledo homeowners are underwater on their mortgages. The new numbers from Realty Track. Those stories, and Jay says another warm up on the way. We're back in just 35 seconds. This is 13 ABC Action News with Diane Larson. 
13 ABC First Warning Weather with Chief Meteorologist Jay Birchback. And welcome back. We have clear skies out there, no rain tonight, so we're in store for some chilly weather. Right now, the current temperature is 54. So far, that's the low of the day. The high today, 74 degrees. Now we've had no wind uh, the last hour or so, so winds have gone calm. Dew points near 50, so our low tonight somewhere around that dew point temperature. I'm calling for a low of 48 degrees with the two dew point that is may drop a bit more between here and sunrise tomorrow. Now along the lake shore, it's much warmer in the 60s. Thanks to Lake Erie inland here. We're in the 50s, although I do see a 60 in Ottawa, so maybe a few clouds out there, but overnight Unlike last night, temperatures will down near that 50 degree mark. So as you wake up tomorrow, sunglasses, coats and jackets will be necessary. Now our forecast for Friday, bright sunshine throughout the afternoon, beautiful with a high in the upper 70s. For Saturday, maybe a few more clouds, but we start dry here at 7. We'll take you through the daytime and showing a gradual increase in the clouds. Maybe a brief shower here through about 6 p.m. So we're watching uh, the areas here with college football plans you may have for the weekend. These showers tend to diminish as they move in and the main event highest chance for rain. This is 11 p.m. Highest chance for rain should come in just after midnight and should most of it that is be gone by sunrise on Sunday. Here's your forecast tonight. Cool, clear and calm. The low temperature of 48 degrees tomorrow. 77 doesn't get much better for a Friday unless you need some rain, right? A pleasant day with that blue sky. South breeze is light at 5 to 10. Here's that warm up now for Saturday. The high 84 chance of short chance of yours. Very, very late in the evening. Chance of rain Sunday. Very, very early in the morning and cooler with a high of 78 degrees and next week. Tell you what here, it's going to be more like summer again after a fall finish to our weekend. 82 on Monday, 88 degrees on Tuesday, and more showers and storms are possible Wednesday and Thursday. Notice at the end of that seven day, we start to cool back down. So it's not a long lived warm spell or heat wave there, but there is the chance Tuesday, Wednesday, a few spots may touch 90, which can you believe this? We did not hit 90 in the month of August. You're kidding. We waited so, till September, right? Yeah, why not? Let's go backwards <laughs> this year. But it's going to be definitely warm for the weekend and most of the rain while most of us are sleeping. All right. All that's right. always very mm -hmm. nice. All right, Jay, thanks. New at 11, here's a look ahead at what's in tomorrow's editions of The Blade. An independent audit finds the city of Toledo has fewer record-keeping problems. The study found 17 issues with the 2012 documents. That is two fewer than the year before. As more Toledo area homeowners have mortgages that are seriously underwater. New numbers from Realty Track show 37% of borrowers owe more than their properties are worth. You can read more about these stories and other stories in tomorrow's Blade and at ToledoBlade.com. Still to come on Action News, breaking news, the late developments tonight in the search for a missing East Toledo toddler. Lee Conklin joins us again live from Federal Street coming up. First, here are tonight's winning lottery numbers from your official lottery station, 13 ABC. We continue our coverage of late breaking news. Suspected human remains found in the search for a missing East Toledo toddler. 13 ABC's Lee Conklin live from Federal Street again with more. Lee. Now, Diane, it is quiet here at this uh, late hour, but it was far from quiet earlier this afternoon when the discovery, the discovery of that box uh, was made around 3.36 this afternoon. Uh, authorities reportedly placing a tarp over that box the coroner confirming tonight appears to contain human remains, possibly those of baby Elena Steinfurth. All this happening some three months after the baby went missing from 704 Federal Street, her home here in East Toledo. News of that bringing out a flurry of emotions, violence erupting as our cameras roll during the 5 o'clock news, but luckily there, no one was seriously hurt. And once again, we're awaiting a news conference to be held by Toledo Police tomorrow morning at 1030. In the meantime, Angela Steinfurth, Elena's mother, and her ex-boyfriend, Stephen Kane, locked up at the Lucas County Jail on obstruction of justice charges. But the big questions remain. Why did it take so long to find that evidence, to find that box? And the most important question, are those remains the remains of baby Elena Steinfurth? Questions we expect will be answered tomorrow. And you can see that news conference once again live on 13ABC. Reporting from East Toledo, Lee Conklin, 13ABC Action News. 
Still to come on Action News, we'll announce our High School Athlete of the Week plus opening night for the Finley Fillers. Dave has college football coming up next. Four hours from now, week two, Dave White Chevrolet Football Friday. Let's take a quick check of your schedule. We'll start with our Buffalo Wild Wings Wild Game of the Week, Central Catholic and Southview. St. Francis Bedford will also be at Eastwood, Perrysburg, Wauseon. Big time matchup, Brian and Archibald. We'll see you at Bowser, Columbian, Start, and Whitmer. Plus, check us out at Waite, Northwood, Whiteford, and Ottawa Hills. 14 games tomorrow night. We'll start time 11-15. University of Finley kicking off its season tonight, hosting Urbana. Inside a minute left, first quarter, Ferreras Gordon, the pick, make it six the other way. Oilers up 19-14 at the half. Second half now, former Ohio State starting wide receiver Verlin Reed, now quarterback in the Oilers, hits Ball State transfer Seth White on a fourth and two. Couple of jukes and he's in there for a score. Later in the third, Nathan Morris back on the kickoff. Nathan kept his receipt. He'd like to turn this, please. 91 yards to the house. Oilers explode 51-33 over Urbana. It's the season premiere for our Glass City Federal Credit Union Athlete of the Week Award. Here's Steve Slifka in Sandusky. Perkins faced an early 18-7 deficit and looked to be on its way to a third straight loss to Bellevue in just the last year. That is until Pirates defensive back Dale Irby made a statement in the second half. Two interceptions returned for touchdowns and a 75-yard TD run as Perkins reigning Division Three runners-up 42-24. to 24. Man, I don't really like to say I because we're a team and it like helps us all out. We all play together as a team. We just all hopped on Dale's back basically and I mean he made another play down the stretch too and I mean, we just rode him to that. We talked uh, in the beginning of the year about him, you know, stepping it up. Last year, he didn't have to play that leadership role. He could, you know, he could just do his thing. This year, he needed he, he needed to be a, a leader. You know, we're really happy, and, and I think there's still big games to come out of him. Irby's three touchdowns and for touchdowns and for 200 all-purpose yards came in front of a special guest Friday night. That guest, Browns running back Trent Richardson, watching from the sideline. I mean, I didn't really realize until the end of the game, like when we were out. I didn't really like pay attention. I just like focus on the game. With this week's Athlete of the Week, Steve Slovko, 13 ABC Action Sports. Yeah. And the Tigers and Indians had the night off tonight. No baseball tomorrow, of course, 11-15, week two. Can't wait for it. Yay. All right, Dave, thanks. Your wake-up weather forecast right around the corner. Here's a live look from our 13 ABC South Toledo Action Cam. Jay, right back with what we can all expect in the next And here's a look at live Doppler 13,000 HD. No rainfall tonight. Falling temperatures right now. A little warmer out by Lake Erie. Metcalf Field there. Excuse me, Executive Airport. That's a blast from the past. At 60, the rest of us in the 50s. Uh, 48 degrees when you wake up tomorrow. Bright and sunny, a bit chilly. Your sunrise time at 7.07. Beautiful for the afternoon. Beautiful and great weather for football. Friday, 77. Warm Saturday. Late evening, nighttime showers. Leave Sunday mainly dry and cooler. And warmer next week. In fact, might use the word hot Tuesday and Wednesday. And we want to recap breaking news out of East Toledo tonight. Toledo police say they found evidence in the case of missing child Elena Steinfurth. The Lucas County coroner confirms that police pulled a box of suspected human remains from a home on Federal Street. Toledo police will hold a news conference to release more information tomorrow morning at 1030 a.m. 13 ABC carrying the entire news conference on air. We will also stream it live on 13abc.com. 13 minutes of nonstop news returns tomorrow at 11 o'clock only on 13 ABC. For Lee Conklin reporting from the field, Jay Burschback, Dave Holmes, and all of us at 13 ABC, I'm Diane Larson.